This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for all your needs. Whether you're an entrepreneur, content creator, or just looking to build a beautiful portfolio, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website to showcase your work, engage with your audience, and sell your products all in one place on your own terms. Hey, siblings! I'm not sure how to do an intro in this one, so grayscale painting. What is it? and why am I worshipping it so hard right now. Pretty sure all of you already know or at least heard of what grayscale painting is. The name basically explains itself. The other name for grayscale painting is value study. What is value study? If we google value study, it's described as a, a drawing showing the shapes that will make up the painting, parenthesis composition, but also assigns a value to every shape from one, parenthesis the white paper, to five, parenthesis the darkest star I, I I'm even more confused. I'm not good with words, so I'll just show you. These are references for value study. As you may notice, yes, they're all in black and white or grayscale. Value study focuses more on how lights and shadows work in different lighting. It also focuses on mid-tones, which creates depth and dimension in your painting. Ever feel like your drawing is as flat as the earth to some people? <laughs> Sorry. That's because it lacks values, hence no depth and dimension. To start value study, it's highly encouraged by the great Cox Illust to start with simple references, something that doesn't have too many details but has great shadows, such as statues and 3D models. I will put a link to my value study Pinterest board, I've compiled some references if you wanna try them out. But Fong, I don't wanna draw statues, I wanna draw hot guys and gals! Some of the statues are hot, like this one or this one. This one's hot too, but this one is too complicated, so find easier ones to draw. You know what else is hot and is that sounds so wrong. You know what's easy and simple to do? Creating a beautiful website in Squarespace. Are you A. An entrepreneur, B. Business owner, C. Content creator, or D none of the above. Doesn't matter what you do, because Squarespace got you covered. Squarespace has tons of website templates for all your needs and preferences, from minimalistic design to something fun and futuristic. If you have trouble deciding what template to use, you can filter based on what you do or what you need. You can customize them any way you like, or even build your own template. The sky's the limit, and also your imagination, I suppose. Thanks to their Fluid Engine technology, you can simply drag and drop images, videos, or any other assets to your website. You can also add buttons, social links, even products, and scheduling directly to your website and place them anywhere you want. If you're planning to sell merch, I'm thinking about it by the way, Squarespace has a print-on-demand service powered by Printful, so you can save time on production and shipping because they will handle all of that for you. You just have to do the artistic stuff. Orders and inventories can also be monitored through Squarespace, and that's the great thing. You can do all that in just one place, no need to download this, install that, and have multiple platforms to start your business. Fung, don't we get a discount or something after listening to you? Why yes, my beautiful friend. Head to squarespace.com slash fungzao or use the code fungzao to get 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Squarespace.com slash fungzao, 10% off. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. After you've decided which statues to draw, you shouldn't sketch and just go straight into painting the silhouettes. After that, start painting the shadows and draw as little detail as possible. That way, you can focus more on the shadows and mid-tones rather than details in the statue. I don't make this up by the way. This is what Cox Illust does and this is what he assigned his students to do. This is not a trust me bro moment, this is a trust Cox Illust because he is an art god moment. I have painted a statue in my previous video if you wanna check it out. I talk more about it in more detail there. For this video though, I wanna draw Al Haytham. Fung, why do you keep drawing Al Haytham? I'm bored! You're bored seeing Al Haytham? Yeah, right. Month, I don't believe that. I don't believe you. I'll be using this photograph of Jackson as reference. The shadow is great, the pose is hot checks all of my boxes. This picture is already in grayscale, but you can turn your references into grayscale for value study. Because we are drawing a character instead of copying the reference, sketching is needed, but I'll just show you how I do it. You can follow my process, or you can just sketch as usual, it's up to you, but bear with me for a second. I normally paint the silhouettes first, so that I can get the big picture of what I'm drawing. I also do a little shading, especially on the big parts of the drawing, in this case it's his shirt, but I refrain from drawing details, 
because this is just a rough shading. I also shade the facial features just so I can see where the eyes, nose, and lips go. It is quite unsettling, I know. Alhatham's hair is quite different from Jackson's, so I have to sketch it real quick. I'm drawing Alhatham with his forehead exposed, by the way, just in case you thought I don't remember what his hair looked like. Now I will sketch Alhatham on top of the shading. I reduce the opacity of the shading layer so that I can see the sketch more clearly. I know this method looks redundant, like why don't I just sketch and shade it later, right? I uh, I don't have a concrete reason why I do this either. It's just that I feel more comfortable sketching if I have a rough shading or at least a silhouette as a base. Lately, I don't like sketching directly on a blank canvas, so having the rough shading, as ugly as it is, helps me picture the overall painting. This method might seem unorthodox, stupid even, but for me, this is so much easier than drawing the circle and a cross and you draw a box and then all that jazz, you know? But again, this might not work on everyone, so just do what makes you more comfortable. Because I already have the rough shading, I can simply liquefy it to align with the sketch. It won't fit 100%, but at least I don't have to shade it from scratch. Okay, so we start from this uh, slenderman looking entity to somewhat decent sketch of Alhatham. I don't like having too many layers, so I merge all the layers and start painting over the sketch. Use low opacity brush when you start rendering so you don't lose all the midtones. If it's too subtle, increase the opacity. Let me show you in more detail how to create midtones. You have this light gray and then you apply darker gray in low opacity brush. You get this color in between and boom, it's a midtone. Easy, right? Midtones is very important in creating volume. So your painting looks 3D and not flat. And this is adding realism to your painting because it balances the contrast between the lightest and the darker shade. Imagine only having two tones in your drawing. Well, I mean, it will look anime and it's fine if that's what you want, but to make it more realistic, add some midtones. And by using low opacity brush, you can instantly get the midtones without having to open your color wheel. I remember Cook's Illust encourage this practice so you'd get better at midtones. If you can't trust the old Fung, you can trust Coke's Illust. Since we are drawing Alhatham in different hairstyle, it's a good idea to have multiple references. I collected some references that is somewhat similar to the hairstyle I'm going for. You can turn it into grayscale if necessary, but I'll just use the messes. Okay, since we have colored reference, let's make a quick comparison. If you use the eyedropper tool and then aim it to the skin, you can see that there are too many different colors and shades. Not only do they have different hues, their values are also different. If you're a beginner, these colors are very distracting because there are too many variables you need to pay attention to. If you're working with grayscale, however, you just need to worry about the values. You might remember that I used to paint using dull colors back then because I find it hard to color my paintings if I use grayscale. And it's true, it is hard to color grayscale if you're not used to it. But I always feel like there's something off and missing in my paintings. I'm just not sure what, until I made a video about value study for the first time. I realized that, my word, I've been lacking depth and dimension this whole time. And this is something that I cannot achieve if I keep using the same method and worry about the colors the whole time. So I was like, something's gotta give. I need to change the way I paint. And that, brothers, sisters, and siblings, is why I turn into grayscale painting. And the improvement really shows. I remember posting this painting of some Song Ming Yi of 80s. I'm a huge fan by the way. And a lot of you are saying that my painting has improved. And it's all thanks to value study. I started doing value studies on statues in November. And my painting of Ming Yi is in January. Which means I'm improving in around 3 months. That's really quick. For me at least. I really encourage you to do this value study. Seriously, don't worry about the colors. Grayscale is beautiful as is. And nobody will be asking questions about colors once they see how much your painting has improved. Oh, and in case I forgot, this is the brush I've been using for the longest time. Well, at least since the start of using Ibis Paint. And I have no intention of switching to a different brush in the near future. And no, you don't need the QR code, just scroll down the brushes library. If any of you still asking in the comments for my brush, I'll know that you're not watching this video till the very end. That's right, I'm on to you. I will make a video about coloring grayscale in the future. I will leave this painting as it is, in grayscale. I already get the hang of color coloring it in Procreate, but since a lot of you are using Ibis Paint, I would need more time because the coloring process requires a lot of experiments and trial and error. Well, that's all from me. Uh, check your closet at night, Slenderman Alhatham might be in there, so sleep tight.